Welcome to Decoding Healthcare Research, a podcast by Agora Project. Join us as we delve into the behind the scenes world of groundbreaking research and the dynamic healthcare industry, interviewing top paper authors, engaging experts on industry related topics, and exploring medical subjects that affect our daily lives. And now, your host, Dr. E.F. Rain. Welcome to Decoding Healthcare Research. I'm your host, Efrain Riveros, Dr. E.F. Rain. Today, we are going to talk about ketogenic diet, the effects on health, and all the mechanisms involved in the metabolic pathways related to this uh, diet that has been used for a long time, but uh, has acquired uh, a lot of attention lately uh, in, in different general media and in the medical literature as well. So to discuss this, we, we brought an expert and we are uh, actually honored to, to have here Dr. Martha Rusek. She's um, a researcher uh, at the Department of Pathophysiology for the Medical Faculty of, uh, I'm sorry, for the Medical Sciences, Faculty of Medical Sciences, uh, Medical University of Lublin in Poland. Um, welcome, Dr. Rusek. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for this uh, invitation. I'm so happy to be here and share my uh, knowledge uh, about ketogenic diet in uh, pathological conditions. That's great. Thank you so much. So um, to try to focus our discussion, we are going to use a, a paper that uh, Dr. Rusek and her team published in the International Journal of Me Molecular Sciences in 2019. It's a nice review titled Ketogenic Diet in Alzheimer's Disease. So first of all, it's not a secret that Alzheimer's disease is, um, is becoming more prevalent worldwide. Uh, and this is even in light of underdiagnosis, because sometimes mild cognitive dysfunction is not yet diagnosed as uh, Alzheimer's disease. So it's a, it's a topic that definitely interests everybody in the general audience. So uh, my first question uh, to you, Dr. Rusek, is, has two parts. First, uh, what sparked your interest in this particular theme of research? And second, can you tell us a little bit about a Alzheimer's disease, a brief overview, what is the problem in this condition? Uh, okay, thank you for this uh, question. So uh, the point of my research is uh, Alzheimer's disease uh, and different perspective of uh, that uh, disorder. Uh, we are uh, do some studies in uh, humans, uh, but also uh, we have uh, animal model uh, of that uh, disease. Uh, actually, animal uh, model um, has some ischemic uh, issues uh, so uh, those issues are similar to changes uh, um, which Alzheimer's disease um, does in uh, human beings we know that Alzheimer's disease is a devastating neurodegenerative uh, disorder uh, we know uh, that we have uh, more and more uh, cases of that disease uh, every single uh, year among our uh, patients uh, and still we are not sure what's the underlying pathology of this. We know a lot already uh, about this uh, disease, but we don't know everything. Uh, and also uh, so many cases of people and still we don't have uh, effective uh, treatment which can be uh, used in, uh, in people. Uh, that's why we are looking for other options uh, as well. And actually we came uh, to know, we found that um, even diet may have a very positive uh, impact uh, on uh, human uh, health. Uh, it may uh, affect in a good way uh, the patient uh, condition. Uh, sometimes uh, diet even may uh, diminish uh, signs and uh, symptoms which are uh, observed uh, in, uh, in the patient. So that Alzheimer uh, disease uh, is, uh, is present in uh, many people uh, around the world. Uh, this disorder is uh, multifactorial. Uh, uh, it's characterized by uh, cognitive impairment. It's characterized by uh, loss of uh, memory, uh, impair um, uh, self-care. Uh, people have uh, also uh, changes in uh, personality. And later uh, in, uh, in their life, they need uh, help of other people to uh, live and uh, survive. Uh, that uh, disorder do have very serious uh, changes to their uh, brain. 
Yeah, that, and I agree with you that the pharmacological therapy has um, actually channeled a lot of resources and uh, not only research, but um, uh, medications that have been released to the public. And uh, the, the, the results have been very discouraging so far, uh, having unable to find a solution, in part because uh, the, the focus has been uh, the just the accumulation of beta amyloid, uh, which apparently is just a byproduct and a, and a sign, a consequence of a series of metabolic changes that happen in the body. And, uh, and I think, as you mentioned, that the ketogenic diet uh, is a comprehensive solution or is at least part of the solution. So let's talk about the metabolic uh, pathways uh, in which the ketogenic diet is involved. But before that, I'm going to ask you, what is ketogenic diet? What components does it have? Uh, okay, so uh, ketogenic uh, diet is a diet where uh, we consume a high uh, fat uh, diet and low carbohydrate uh, diet. So uh, more fat, less carbohydrates uh, and uh, that carbohydrates uh, amount is uh, reduced mainly how we get energy from uh, from fat uh, and that uh, affect our metabolism we have a shift in uh, metabolism from uh, glucose metabolism uh, toward uh, metabolism of uh, fatty uh, acids with production of uh, ketone uh, bodies uh, and those ketone bodies uh, are source of energy instead of glucose for uh, our cells uh, when we are on that uh, type of uh, diet. Uh, also, that uh, diet uh, provides some sufficient amount of uh, protein, uh, which is necessary for the proper growth and uh, development. So we are talking about what approximate percentage of fat uh, in, in the diet? Uh, it's around four gram fat uh, per one gram uh, protein and carbohydrates. So, so the ratio can, is mm -hmm. four to uh, one uh, among uh, nutrients. And to, uh, in order to achieve that uh, ratio between uh, um, fat so, and carbohydrates so, so and protein. So around 90% uh, of total calorie uh, in, uh, income uh, is from fat. That's, yeah, that's, that's actually a lot, right? <laughs> yes, uh, it's a lot. And just 5% uh, protein and 4% carbohydrates. So, uh, so huge amount of uh, fat uh, intake. And, and what type of fats can, can be included in the diet? Uh, of course, we shouldn't uh, uh, include uh, saturated uh, fat. Uh, we should uh, choose the uh, good type of fat um, uh, here. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. So let's let's talk about the, um, the different pathways. You mentioned that the, the the goal is to induce ketogenesis, the formation of ketone bodies, uh, for the for those ketone bodies to be used as fuel by by cells instead of glucose. So the, um, the normally uh, glucose is used for all the metabolic processes. Is the preferential substrate. Uh, but uh, how, first of all, how are keto bodies produced? And second, how are they used by different tissues, including the brain? Uh, okay, so uh, here uh, we don't have uh, that uh, pathway uh, where is uh, glucolysis. Um, we just uh, get to a uh, Krebs cycle and um, ketone uh, bodies are uh, being uh, produced uh, here. Uh, they provide uh, more energy uh, compared to uh, glucose. Also, they can be metabolized uh, much uh, faster uh, than glucose uh, because we bypass a uh, glycolytic uh, pathway uh, here. And uh, glucose actually uh, needs to undergo uh, glycolysis uh, uh, pathway. Uh, so uh, here we may elevate uh, 
ATP uh, generation uh, by mitochondria uh, oxidation. So basically, uh, more energy uh, can be uh, uh, produced uh, uh, here. Uh, and those uh, changes affect uh, other uh, metabolic uh, pathways uh, like um, uh, carbohydrates uh, in, uh, in our body. Uh, and we start observing uh, changes uh, even uh, like after one uh, day of uh, being uh, on that uh, diet, uh, changes in uh, ketone bodies level, uh, glucose level, uh, insulin, uh, glucagon, uh, uh, fatty acids. Uh, so those uh, changes are, uh, are observed. So, and it's interesting that you see those changes very early and it's very clear that uh, as you shift the metabolic pathways towards the use of uh, ketone bodies, you start seeing some peripheral benefits in terms of insulin sensitivity uh, and effects on weight loss in, uh, that, that is actually some people use it just for that reason. But, uh, but in this case, I want to focus on the effect uh, of these ketone bodies in the brain. So the, the first thing is um, uh, what ketone bodies are important? Are they able to cross the blood-brain barrier? Uh, no, actually, uh, but they affect uh, processes which are uh, happening. Uh, they affect uh, production of reactive oxygen uh, species. Uh, they affect um, activity function of uh, mitochondria uh, in cells. So that's... Um, uh, one uh, way how uh, uh, ketone bodies work. Uh, another uh, direction, uh, they affect uh, glucose uptake, uh, glycolysis process, uh, level of uh, insulin, uh, production of uh, cytokines, which are uh, linked with uh, inflammatory response. Uh, also, um, uh, ketone bodies affect uh, mm, a component of uh, microbiota in uh, in gut. Uh, what's the uh, presence of uh, microorganisms uh, over there? What kind of microorganisms uh, are uh, present in uh, guts? Uh, also, uh, ketone uh, bodies uh, affect. Uh, uh, inflammation uh, development, uh, so that ch they change uh, cytokine uh, concentration, but also activity of uh, lymphocytes, the uh, cytotoxic, uh, and uh, also uh, inflammation, which uh, has uh, uh, impact on uh, Alzheimer's disease and development. Yeah, from what you say, I gather that the, the effects of uh, the ketogenic diet are multifaceted. So it affects different processes outside of the brain. It's actually very intriguing what you say about the changes that it causes in the microbiota, but also changes in the brain. You mentioned that the, it modulates inflammation. Uh, it changes the function of the mitochondria and affects directly the immune fu function as well as the the oxidative stress. So all those effects are, are critical and important. So what, what do you think are the most, imp the, the most important effects on specifically what has concerned researchers uh, in Alzheimer's disease, uh, the tau protein and the beta amyloid? So is there an effect on those deposits uh, when we use ketogenic diet? Uh, yes, of course, uh, there is a huge impact of uh, ketogenic diet on dementia uh, and neurodegeneration, uh, which are linked with uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease. Uh, so uh, dementia means problems with uh, thinking, loss of memory, uh, problems with uh, problem solving. And actually uh, here, when we have people with uh, dementia, we observe glucose uh, up take uh, being uh, decreased and also problems with metabolism of uh, glucose uh, here uh, and that is linked with uh, down regulation of uh, glucose uh, transporter uh, which is called uh, GLAT1 uh, in people with um, uh, Alzheimer's 
uh, disease. Uh, also, we observe that uh, high uh, glycemic diet, uh, that means uh, high uh, uh, carbohydrates uh, level uh, in a diet, uh, is linked with um, increased insulin resistance and higher risk of uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease. Uh, and we know already from some clinical trials that uh, ketogenic uh, diet may improve cognitive uh, performance uh, in uh, such uh, uh, patients. Uh, also, uh, we have the presence of uh, advanced glycation and uh, products uh, and mitochondrial uh, function uh, can be changed uh, due to um, their uh, presence. Uh, also, their uh, presence is linked with um, aging uh, process, uh, which, uh, which uh, can be enhanced in uh, Alzheimer's uh, disease uh, uh, pathology. And those molecules uh, also are found in uh, amyloid plaques and uh, neurofibrillary uh, tangles, uh, which appear in brain uh, as a result of uh, oxidative uh, stress, um, uh, protein uh, cross-linking, uh, or uh, neuron cell uh, rows. Yeah, uh, and yeah, that's that's very very interesting, and um, I. I, I want to to focus on one thing that you mentioned. the The dynamics of the metabolism of uh, glucose is affected, um, mm -hmm. and and the, there is some insulin resistance. Actually, some people call Alzheimer's disease diabetes type three. And the once the 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 glucose is there, it cannot be incorporated because of these uh, changes in in the GLUT one receptor that you mentioned. So that leads me to, to the fact that the problem is mainly metabolic and uh, the mitochondria is central in this metabolic problem. So what is the exact effect of the ketogenic diet uh, via the ketone bodies on the mitochondria? Uh, okay, so uh, first of all, uh, the metabolism uh, in mitochondria is changed. Uh, the production of um, oxygen uh, in uh, mitochondria, mitochondria uh, uh, oxidation. Um, also, uh, we have um, uh, changes uh, here uh, due to a number of uh, neuron uh, cells. Uh, and uh, we have found that uh, ketogenic diet uh, also may affect um, uh, genes uh, of uh, hippocampus, uh, which uh, encode mitochondrial and energy uh, metabolism uh, enzymes. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, that therapy may provide some uh, alternative uh, energy uh, uh, sources. And mitochondrial dysfunction, uh, thanks to that, can be uh, uh, restored. Uh, also, uh, mitochondrial dysfunction is linked with uh, oxidative, uh, oxidative uh, stress and uh, production of uh, reactive oxygen uh, uh, species. Yeah, so the the mitochondrial changes are are definitely central, as you as you mentioned, in the effect of the ketogenic diet. But now that uh, we have discussed all the metabolical pathways and how they interact uh, to cause some benefit in in the in the patient with Alzheimer's disease, let's go to the studies. The, there have been preclinical studies, animal studies, and also clinical studies. What is the evidence? of the usefulness or effectiveness of the ketogenic diet according to those studies? Uh, yes, uh, we have some uh, clinical uh, studies and preclinical studies, so with uh, animals and uh, human beings. Uh, not many studies uh, were uh, performed so uh, far, uh, or studies were uh, not included uh, so many um, uh, individuals. Uh, but we find uh, some uh, positive uh, impact of those studies. Uh, we found that uh, ketogenic uh, diet uh, affect uh, cognitive uh, uh, function. Uh, in both mice and uh, humans, we observe uh, improvement. Uh, in 
in uh, mice uh, after 40 uh, days of uh, ketogenic diet, uh, we observed a 25% uh, percent, um, uh, uh, more uh, neuron cells uh, which are uh, better functioning. Your paper, you mentioned that uh, the effect uh, is positive uh, for the most part with the use of ketogenic diet, but in some studies they also use a medium chain triglycerides as as an adjunct or as an addition to the diet or even instead of the of the long chain triglycerides is is the medium chain triglyceride an option or something that adds value uh, actually, it's an option. Uh, uh, the, they are uh, better uh, metabolized uh, in uh, in uh, individuals, and also we found uh, improvement uh, of uh, memory uh, when we use uh, those uh, uh, forms, uh, medium chain uh, crystallized. Uh, also, uh, people uh, in uh, one of the study had uh, got uh, supplements with uh, with that, uh, and we observed uh, improvement uh, of uh, of their uh, cognitive uh, performance. I see. As you mentioned, overall the 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 effect is positive, uh, both in preclinical studies and also in clinical studies, with uh, some significant improvement in cognitive function, memory, and performance in some tests. Uh, so, to me, it's clear that the ketogenic diet definitely has a place uh, in the treatment and even prevention of uh, of Alzheimer's disease. Now, let's talk about side effects. How well tolerated is this diet by, by people? Uh, we know that uh, this uh, diet can be well tolerated, but not in all uh, individuals. Uh, also, that uh, diet, uh, even it has great uh, positive uh, impact, uh, it has uh, some uh, adverse uh, effects. Uh, first of all, uh, people uh, may uh, face uh, dehydration and uh, hypoglycemia. Uh, other side uh, effects are less uh, common. Uh, compared to uh, this. Uh, people uh, have uh, changes in uh, lipid uh, profile, uh, total cholesterol concentration, uh, number of uh, triglycerides, uh, low density uh, lipoproteins. Uh, people may face problems uh, from uh, gastrointestinal uh, tract like nausea, vomiting, uh, diarrhea. Also, they may um, complain of uh, loss of appetite uh, which is uh, which may uh, uh, be the uh, outcome uh, on top of that uh, inflammation of uh, organs like uh, liver uh, pancreas uh, also, uh, we may uh, find changes in water electrolyte uh, balance, uh, changes in concentration of uh, magnesium uh, sodium uh, and uh, also some people uh, may observe uh, development of uh, other pathological conditions like uh, atherosclerosis, cardiomyopathy uh, or formation of kidney stones. So and it's it's clear that like any intervention there are side effects and uh, one in particular I, I think is worth um, discussing a little bit more about and is the the changes in the lipid profile so you mentioned that uh, the there are definitely changes in ldl triglycerides uh, ldl and triglycerides and uh, the but you also mentioned that these changes tend to go back to normal after one year is that being yes. a consistent finding Yes, that, that, that's what uh, study says, that around uh, one year is needed uh, to normalize the level of uh, lipid uh, cholesterol, uh, actually. And I was uh, actually uh, discussing with uh, Dr. Raghi, he's one, one other author that, uh, who investigates in this, in this topic, and uh, uh, he was mentioning about the role of the, not only the LDL level, but the size of the, of the molecule is a determinant of, uh, of morbidity. That's something that we could add to this to this discussion. So uh, the ketogenic diet is uh, effective. We we see that from from your paper and your your nice review. 
the the side effects uh, can be important and need to be monitored. Uh, one other problem that I see with this diet is uh, adherence because it's difficult to sustain it over time because it's a little bit of a radical intervention. Uh, you know, having 90% of, of, your, of your substrates as, as fat. Uh, what, what, what do you think can be done to improve the adherence to, to ketogenic diet? I have no idea. <laughs> 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 yeah, because it's, it's uh, yeah, it's interesting because the, um, I, I have even friends who have started doing it, uh, but mm -hmm. over time it's difficult to sustain. And I think that has been one of the, of the obstacles that they have found. Uh, and uh, the majority of studies, as you mentioned, show a effect, positive effect, but most mm -hmm. studies are short term. So we really yes, don't that, have long term problem. studies exactly that can that can see something that probably deserves future future research and um, in that aspect as well. Uh, what do you think should come next? What type of uh, gaps or what what uh, knowledge gaps need to be filled in the future? Uh, so basically, already we know that uh, ketogenic uh, diet uh, affect uh, positively uh, the metabolism. Uh, also, we need to uh, always find a uh, balance uh, among uh, patient, uh, whether it can be uh, useful and helpful for them uh, or uh, or not. Uh, we know that uh, cognitive uh, impairment uh, is uh, improved uh, thank to, thanks to this uh, diet. Uh, and uh, of course, we should uh, find uh, how um, keto uh, bodies, uh, how this uh, ketogenic uh, diet uh, may uh, restore abnormal glucose uh, metabolism, uh, which uh, usually is uh, present in, uh, in people uh, with uh, Alzheimer's disease. We don't know much uh, about uh, that uh, uh, yet. Uh, also not uh, Alzheimer's disease, but maybe other uh, disorders uh, as well. Uh, and of course, as you said, that uh, long term, uh, uh, what's the outcome after uh, long term of uh, ketogenic uh, diet uh, is uh, during studies, which uh, we uh, have already clinical trials, uh, that performance was uh, checked after just a few uh, days or a few weeks. We don't know what is happening after years of uh, that uh, uh, diet so uh, that would be interesting uh, for uh, for further studies yeah and uh, and i think this discussion has been very productive the the way you put it uh, together is is really helpful uh, as you mentioned it is is beneficial you talked about uh, the different molecular and metabolic metabolic mechanisms involved in the the effect of ketogenic diet, and it's definitely not not a promise uh, uh, for Alzheimer's disease. It's actually a reality, and uh, probably needs to be incorporated, uh, obviously with uh, with medical advice and monitoring. Uh, I think uh, we can wrap up our conversation uh, with with this comment. And um, first of all, I want to thank you, Dr. Rusek, for for thank being so here much. with us, for sharing this knowledge with us. And uh, we are definitely uh, going to continue following up on her research and uh, probably contact her in the future to to learn more about this exciting topic. Uh, for our audience, uh, don't forget to leave us the feedback and uh, in the comments section, you will find the link to the paper that we discussed today. See you in the next episode of uh, Decoding Healthcare Research. Thank you so much for tuning into this episode. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode. If you have any questions or thoughts about today's topic, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to leave your comments down below. For more information and references related to today's discussion, you can find them in the video description below. We appreciate your support and look forward to having you back for our next episode.